hello! Today we're going to read a book called Beetle Bop and it's by Denise Fleming and it's a scholastic book and it's really fun and colorful. I'm going to read this beginning part. Dear readers, when I was young I used to help my mother in the garden. One day I was picking flower eating beetles off the roses and peonies. I wasn't paying much attention to what I was doing and I plucked a bee instead of a beetle. Ouch! From that day forward, I took a closer look at all the insects in the garden. Beetles came in all shapes, sizes, colors, and patterns. Some beetles look like tiny monsters. Whirligig beetles have two sets of eyes. Fireflies light up the night. Beetles live everywhere and eat all sorts of plants and insects. Ladybugs and fireflies are two of my favorite beetles. Some beetles fly, some beetles flip but all beetles are fascinating. Beetles Bop by Denise Fleming. I thought that was a nice little foreword. Beetle Bop. Striped beetles, spotted beetles, all over dotted beetles. Brown beetles, green beetles, not often seen beetles. Buzzing beetles, humming beetles, steadily drumming beetles. Big beetles, small beetles, crawl up the wall beetles. Chewing beetles, sawing beetles, noisily gnawing beetles. Round beetles, square beetles, fly in the air beetles. Bark beetles, sand beetles, fill up your hand beetles. Diving beetles, whirling beetles, spiraling, swirling beetles. Blue beetles, black beetles, hide in the crack beetles. Glowing beetles, flashing beetles, constantly crashing beetles. Beetles flip, beetles flop. Beetles fly, beetles bop. And that's the end. It says beetles live in forests, deserts, mountains, and ponds. They come in many different shapes, sizes, colors, and patterns. But all beetles have three body segments, six legs, and almost all have two sets of wings, a front set that protects the second set, which is used for flying. Beetles are one of the largest groups of animals on earth. Some are pests, some are friends. What kinds of beetles live near you? In today's art lesson, I thought it would be fun to draw an insect. And hopefully you just heard the beetle bop read aloud, which showed lots of different beetles. For today's lesson, um, all you'll need is a piece of paper, and I'm just using a nine by 12. You could even use a piece of copy paper, or if you wanted to do it on a colored paper, that would be fine. Um, you might wanna start with a pencil. We're gonna be drawing from observation, so drawing what we see, um, and then tracing with a black marker. I'm just gonna use a Crayola marker. You could also use a Sharpie. But I thought it would be fun to just show you a few different things about insects. There's lots of books about insects. This one's um, about butterflies and caterpillars and their life cycles. And uh, this is the time of year when insects are 
coming out. You'll see them a lot more, especially as people are going outside. Um, this one is called Bugs or Insects. This one is another one from Caterpillar to Butterfly. I've been seeing a lot of butterflies um, in my garden. And there's lots of drawing books about insects. This one is just Draw Insects. This one is Draw 50 Creepy Crawlies, a step-by-step -step way to draw bugs, slugs, spiders, scorpions, butterflies, and many more, okay? Um, and at Target, I had even found um, these cards, insect cards, which are really neat because it shows you one, a picture of one insect, and then on the back, it gives you a lot of information about them. But there's also a lot of things on online. If you wanted to Google an insect, you could do that. And any of these books could be something that you look at and draw from. Um, I also found these plastic bugs. You can even find these at the dollar store, or you might already have some. And um, they're really, really interesting, and they're nice to use because they don't move. So you can really look at it and draw what you're seeing. Um, so there's a beetle. This one's a butterfly. You can even see the underneath part. This one looks kind of like a hornet or a type of wasp. This one is a grasshopper. You could draw it from the side or from the top like you're looking down at that insect. And then here's another beetle right here. Okay, and they're all different kinds, all different colors. You can try to make it look realistic or you can use your imagination when you're coloring it. And it, actually the best thing would be if you caught your own bug. Um, and there are these little bug catching kits. This one has a little net. Um, and then this one, it looks almost like scissors on the top. And then there's a little globe at the bottom where you could capture an insect. You could also just put it in a mason jar. Um, just make sure that there's always an opening so that it can breathe. Um, and then after you look at it and study it and draw it, you let it go free, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this beetle right here. And um, you'll just wanna check and make sure, is this an insect? And insects always have three body parts. So I can see the distinct three body parts here. Some of them are a little bit harder to see, um, but this one has three distinct body parts. And it actually goes kind of two small pieces and then a larger abdomen. Insects also have six legs. So three on one side, three on the other. And they're segmented and jointed because they move. Um, and this one has little tiny um, segments at the bottom. And then this one has antenna right here coming out. And this one has two eyes. And then um, different decorations, like this one has some little polka dots on it, on the sides and then on the top. And this one has wings, but the wings are closed. Whereas with the butterfly, the wings are open. And uh, most insects are symmetrical. So they're the same, a mirror image on each side. So you wanna kind of observe your insect before drawing it. You could fill your paper with lots of insects, maybe 10 or 12 different insects and just kind of have them crawling all over your paper. Or you can draw one insect large. What you don't wanna do is draw one tiny little insect in the middle of your paper and then call it good. Um, some of you may also, if you have one of these little models, might want to trace around it. And tracing can be fun, but you're not learning as much as if you're looking at it and observing what you're drawing, okay? So I'm going to draw one, this insect, this beetle, and I'm going to try to fill up my paper. So I'm going to try to make it as big as I can without going off of um, the paper. And I usually start with the head. And so I can kind of use my pen or my finger and get an idea of how big uh, my insect should be. And I usually start with those three body parts. So maybe the head, um, this middle section, and then the abdomen at the bottom, okay? And then making sure I leave room for the legs, and this one has the antenna as well. So I'm gonna set him aside, but I, I'm gonna keep referring to him. If you have a photograph, you can keep looking at that photograph, draw a little bit, look at it. If you have the real insect, keep observing it, draw a little bit, keep observing it, okay? And I'm gonna start just with a pen so that you can see it a little bit better. So I wanna make sure I leave room for the antenna and I'm gonna start with the head and I really just look for shapes and lines that I see. So the head, it's kind of a rounded triangle shape. So I'm just gonna make this kind of shape, okay? Actually it looks kind of like a rock, <laughs> that's fine. 
Um, and if you mess up, that's fine too. You, if you have a pencil, you could erase it. If it's in marker, I'm just gonna go with it. The second section comes out. There's like a little negative space right here and around it's almost like an oval shape. So I'm gonna draw that part in like that. So now I already have two of the body parts. And the last part is almost like this big U shape for this beetle and it comes out. So I'm observing that it is wider than the first two sections. So I'm gonna start kind of here and bring it out and down, kind of like this, all right? That's pretty big. So I have my three body parts. If I wanna go in and put in the eyes, I can. These ones are pretty big. So I'm gonna put in an eye here and an eye here. This one's a little bit bigger. I'm okay with that. I wanna put in, I can put in the antenna and these ones are kind of wavy. If you wanna change them, you can, but I'm just gonna put them in like this and go off to the edge. I don't wanna just leave it a single line though. I wanna make it a shape. So I'm gonna follow the first line that I already drew, just like so. And then I'm gonna put in the other antenna here and bring it back. So I'm making it a shape not just a line. And then I'm gonna put in the legs, so six legs. So the first leg actually starts right where these two body parts meet. So I'm gonna draw the first section, and if you wanna draw it in lines, first you can. And this one actually has like those three little segments on the end. But again, I don't wanna just leave it a single line. I wanna go in and I wanna make it a shape, okay? So it's kind of like a long oval. The second leg starts almost at the top of this third body part. So it kind of goes like this, and then the three or four end pieces, okay, of the foot. And then I'm gonna go back, and this one actually gets wider at the bottom, okay? So I'm just observing the size difference. And then there's another leg which goes about halfway or two thirds down. So I'm gonna make it come out like this. One, the little, foot pieces and then like this. Okay, so I've done one side of legs. Now I'm gonna go in to do the other side. So again, I observe that the first leg up here is coming out right where those two pieces meet like this. And then there's three sections here. I'm gonna go back and make them a shape. The second leg, and I wanna kinda try to make them as symmetrical as I can. Okay, so starting right here, comes out, down, and then one, two, three. And I'm drawing this beetle um, as if I was just looking straight down at it. Like I'm a bird flying over looking right down at this insect. And then the third leg out, down, out at a diagonal. A little bit thicker here. And that one looks pretty thick to me right here, okay? So once you have the body parts, you have the six legs, you have the antenna, and if you're drawing, for instance, this butterfly, I can't see all six legs because the wings are open. So I would just draw what I see, which are two legs right here and they go under the wings. The other um, two, or actually four legs, I cannot see, so I'm not gonna draw them, okay? Unless you were drawing them upside down. Okay, so now this beetle has some distinguishing features. In this section right here, it has these two curved lines that come down and meet kind of in a V shape. And then at, since these are wings and wing covers that open, I wanna show that by showing this vertical line that comes down and really divides them in half, okay? And then um, I'm gonna put in the details. Like this one has polka dots and it's actually just a little bit below those legs so I'm gonna put one here, and actually it has some darker color around it. This is where you can use your artistic license if you would like to, and add more dots. Like if you're really into dots, you can add more dots. And actually if I look on the side a little bit, it looks like there's some whitish colored dots or lighter dots here. And I'm gonna kind of assume that there, I don't see them on that side, but I wanna add them anyway and make it symmetrical. So I could leave it like this, or hey, maybe I wanna make some more dots, or I wanna make some more designs, okay? Insects have lots of cool designs on them, okay? And actually, if I look back at these antenna, they are actually segmented as well. It's not just a straight shape or line. So if I wanna show that, I can just put in some little curved lines here to show that they are segmented. 
maybe so that they can bend in all different directions, okay? So now you have your drawing of an insect. If you used pencil, you might wanna go over it with a black um, marker. I always like to do that so it really shows up well. You could just leave this to be a nice drawing or you could color it. And uh, I really like using markers so um, for this because they're really bright. Um, and if they're Crayola markers, you can just put the lid on top. And again, I'm gonna try to keep my colors symmetrical as well. So if I color in this circle with red, I'm also going to color this circle red. Maybe I color the interior circle red here. Same thing on the other side. And what I like to do with my first color is put it everywhere that I'm gonna have it, okay? So I don't keep switching colors all the time. Not that I can't go back and add more later, but I'm filling in the head here, trying to stay inside my shapes, and I'm trying to color in the same direction so that you can't see the scribble marks, right? And then make sure when you put your lid back on that you hear that little snap or that you see that it's closed, okay? And then I'm gonna use this light greenish, bluish color. It says seafoam green. You can also outline a section and then color it in. You can color a little bit faster when you're doing the inside, a little bit slower when you're doing the outline. And I'm almost coloring in an oval, so I'm overlapping. Hmm, I think I want the legs to also be colored. All right, so you get the idea. Um, I would not leave white on my insect unless it's part of the design. Like I would not leave these huge sections unless it really is a white insect, okay? Um, you could even do stripes of colors. Um, when you're done, think about the background. Is your bug crawling on a tree trunk? Is it crawling in the grass? Is it crawling on a rock? Is it crawling inside your house, <laughs> right? There can be lots of places for your insect to be. Maybe you wanna have little insects crawling around it, okay? Or other bugs that you see, or a leaf. Maybe he's sitting on a leaf. All right, so think about how you want to finish your insect and spend some time doing that. And you might even really like this and want to draw more than one. All right, see you next time.